Tesla's Model 2 production line is already moving. Finding which parts break first before anyone outside even knows it's running. But here's the shock. That carbon fiber battery floor isn't just lighter. It cuts $2,405 per car, runs 22 degrees Fahrenheit cooler in Texas heat, and saves you $1,200 in brake costs over 10 years. Insurance companies are already pricing it like a mid-sized sedan, not a compact. The math is brutal for competitors, and it's already too late for them to catch up. Let's dive right in. What Musk said in that Q3 call wasn't a promise. It was a confession. The production ramp will take a while because it's going to move as fast as the slowest, dumbest, least lucky thing out of 10,000 unique items. Translation, the line is already running. They're not planning. They're stress testing, finding failures in real time before competitors even finish their PowerPoint presentations. And that carbon fiber battery floor? It's not about being fancy. It's about physics that rewrites the cost structure of every EV on the road. Here's what traditional EV makers can't escape. Cells go into aluminum modules. Modules go into steel trays. Trays bolt to a separate floor pan. Three layers. Three assembly steps. Three opportunities to burn cash. Tesla's structural battery enclosure does all three jobs with one-piece battery housing, vehicle floor structure, and crash absorption system all in a single molded component. But here's where it gets vicious. This isn't woven carbon fiber that requires expensive hand layup or slow autoclave curing. It's chopped fiber injection molded with thermoplastic in 340 seconds. Fast enough for automotive volumes, strong enough to hit 94% of aerospace grade strength at one-eighth the cost. The math is brutal. Conventional battery enclosure costs $840 in materials plus $380 in assembly labor. Tesla's molded version? $490 in materials, $95 in labor. That's $635 saved just on the enclosure itself. Then the secondary kill shot arrives. This thing weighs 67 pounds versus 128 pounds for conventional construction. That 61 pound reduction means Tesla installs a smaller battery pack that still hits 250 miles of range, saving another $870 in battery cells. Total damage, $2,405 per vehicle. Multiply that by a million units annually, and you're looking at $2.4 billion in cost advantage that competitors physically cannot replicate without rebuilding their entire production infrastructure. But cost savings mean nothing if the car dies in real-world conditions. This is where the material science creates an advantage that money alone can't buy. In Tesla's accelerated aging tests at 105 degrees, Fahrenheit ambient temperature with continuous highway driving, the battery runs 22 degrees Fahrenheit cooler than conventional liquid-cooled systems, not because of better cooling pumps. The thermoplastic matrix in that carbon fiber floor has 340% better thermal conductivity than traditional epoxy resins. The floor itself becomes a massive heat sink, pulling thermal energy away from cells 3.4 times faster than aluminum. The result? 91% capacity retention at 150,000 miles in hot climates versus 84 to 86% for conventionally cooled packs. If you're buying in Florida or Arizona, and keeping this car for 10 years, that's the difference between 200 to 27 miles of real-world range and 210 miles at the decade mark. After 10 years of brutal heat, your Model 2 still has enough range for daily use. Your competitor's EV? 
you're calculating whether you can make it to the grocery store and back. This thermal performance caught the attention of people who calculate risk for a living, and their response tells you everything about what's really happening here. Carbon fiber composite absorbs impact energy through progressive fiber fracture, not metal's plastic deformation. In 40 miles per hour offset crash tests, this molded floor absorbs 34% more energy before it reaches the passenger compartment, compared to Steel Construction Insurance Institute for Highway Safety. Preliminary data shows 12 to 16% lower severe injury rates in similar crash scenarios. State Farm and Progressive have already filed 2,025 rate structures pricing the Model 2 into categories normally reserved for mid-size sedans, not compact vehicles. That's $240 to $320 in annual premium savings in high-rate states like Florida and New York. Over 10 years of ownership, that's another $2,400 to $3,200 back in your pocket. The carbon fiber floor literally pays for itself through insurance savings alone. While everyone's been focused on that battery floor, Tesla quietly inverted the entire motor design in a way that eliminates the most common EV failure point. Every EV on the road, including every current Tesla, uses internal rotor motors. The magnetic assembly spins inside a stationary housing. Model 2 flips it. The rotor is the outer component rotating around a stationary inner core. This seemingly academic change eliminates the central shaft, the bearing systems, the lubrication, and the sealed housings. Parts count drops by 23 components. Manufacturing cost decreases $340 per motor. But here's the real payoff. Bearing degradation accounts for 67% of electric motor service requirements in the first 120,000 miles across the industry. External rotor design eliminates bearings in the traditional sense. You're left with just the wheel bearing that already exists and that any mechanic already knows how to replace. The failure mode just became something your local shop can handle without specialized EV training or proprietary tool. The performance advantage from this design decision shows up exactly where you need it most. Placing magnetic material at a larger diameter increases the torque arm. These motors produce 122 pound-feet each at 60 kilowatts, which delivers 17% more torque than internal rotor designs of equivalent power. In California coastal regions and mountainous areas of Colorado, the Model 2 maintains 75 miles per hour on 7% grades that force competitors down to 62 miles per hour. The difference between matching traffic flow and becoming a rolling roadblock. This motor design creates another advantage that most buyers won't notice until they've owned the car for years. But your wallet will definitely feel it. Higher rotational inertia in the external rotor means regenerative braking can hit 0.35 g tau deceleration purely through regeneration before friction brakes even touch. Most urban driving never engages the brake pads. Real-world brake pad life projections hit 180,000 miles compared to 40,000 to 60,000 for conventional vehicles and 80,000 to 100,000 for other EVs over 10 years. That's $1,200 saved in brake service alone. There's a thermal advantage here that compounds with everything else. External rotor motors dissipate heat from the outer surface directly to airflow rather than trapping it inside an enclosed housing, combined with the battery enclosure's superior thermal conductivity. The entire propulsion system runs 19 degrees Fahrenheit cooler under sustained high power conditions. Other EVs experience thermal throttling after 90 minutes of highway driving in hot weather, losing 15 to 20 percent of available power. The Model 2 maintains full power for the entire journey, but the battery cell integration is where Tesla's timeline advantage 
becomes mathematically impossible for competitors to overcome, and the reason involves testing protocols that can't be rushed. Current EV batteries cool indirectly. Liquid flows through channels and heat transfers from cells through thermal interface materials into the cooling system. Model 2 eliminates this entirely. Direct cooling cells mean the coolant contacts the cell casing directly. Traditional thermal interface materials require 22 to 26 months of testing across temperature cycles from negative 40 degrees Fahrenheit to 140 degrees Fahrenheit over 15 years of simulated aging. Direct cooling only needs nine months because you're validating cell casing interaction with coolant, which is a much simpler materials compatibility question. Tesla started validation in January 2024. Competitors developing thermal interface approaches won't complete validation until early 2026, even if they started today. That's an 18-month gap that's locked in. Not because competitors are slow, because physics and testing protocols don't care about your schedule. The performance gap is equally brutal. Direct cooling achieves 2.8 times the thermal transfer rate during fast charging. The pack absorbs 150 kilowatts continuously without temperature limiting, while conventional designs throttle to 90 to 100 kilowatts after 18 to 20 minutes. On a road trip from New York to Florida, Model 2 needs three 18-minute charging stops. Competitors need five 25-minute stops. That's 79 minutes of total travel time saved on an 1,100-mile journey. This same system solves a problem that makes EVS nearly unusable in certain parts of the country during winter months. In extreme cold, the system heats cells from negative 20 degrees Fahrenheit to optimal charging temperature in 8.5 minutes using motor waste heat. Conventional battery heaters take 28 minutes. For northern buyers, winter charging just transformed from enough time to get coffee and use the restroom to barely enough time to plug in the cable. The difference between tolerating an EV in winter and actually preferring it. The direct cooling architecture enables something that fundamentally changes the economics of long-term EV ownership in a way most people won't think about until something breaks. Because cells are individually cooled rather than sealed in modules, a single cell failure doesn't condemn the entire module. Tesla's design allows individual cell replacement in a 45-minute procedure versus the current 4- to 6-hour module replacement. Cost drops from $2,400 to $3,800 for module replacement to $240 for a single cell swap. Cell failure rates run 0.4% annually across the industry. Probability of needing this service during 10 years sits at 3.9%. Low, but not negligible. When it happens, the cost difference is massive. More importantly, Maintaining cells within optimal temperature range more consistently means degradation drops to 0.8% annually versus 1.4% for conventional cooling. Over 10 years, that's 92% retained capacity versus 88%. A 10-year-old Model 2 with 230 miles of range remains useful. Competitors at 220 miles approach the edge of practicality. Kelly Blue Book residual value projections account for battery degradation rates. And this improved retention correlates with 11% higher residual values at 10 years, approximately $2,750 on a $25,000 initial purchase. The production infrastructure is operational. These aren't projections playing out on a timeline. They're mechanical certainties. So here's what that $2,405 cost advantage actually means. It's not just cheaper manufacturing. It's a mathematical lockout that competitors can't overcome. The 18-month testing gap is already locked in. The insurance companies have already repriced their risk models. The production line is finding its weak points right now, 
while competitors are still finalizing blueprints. By the time legacy automakers validate their thermal interface materials in early 2026, Tesla will have delivered hundreds of thousands of Model 2s with direct cooling systems that have been field proven for two years. The carbon fiber floor, the external rotor motors, the individual cell cooling. These aren't just Model 2 features. They're manufacturing paradigms that scale across every vehicle Tesla builds moving forward. This is why the gap keeps widening. Not because Tesla is faster, because they're already running while everyone else is still at the starting line. What's your take? Does a $25,000 EV with these specs change your buying decision? Drop your thoughts in the comments below. This is Tech Revolution. We break down the engineering that reshapes industries before the headlines catch up. Hit that like button if this analysis added value. Subscribe and turn on notifications so you catch our next deep dive. The Model 2 production story is just beginning, and we'll be tracking every development. The line is running, the clock is ticking, and the future just got $2,405 cheaper. What if I told you Tesla just killed welding? The 50,000-ton Gigapress isn't just faster, it's erasing the assembly line forever. One machine 90 seconds, an entire car frame in a single piece. No joints, no welds, no workers. While competitors panic, Musk is three steps ahead. The $25,000 Model 2? Only possible with this beast. But here's the shock. This isn't just building cars. It's building factories that think for themselves. Let's dive right in. For over a century, building a car meant one thing. The assembly line Henry Ford perfected it in 1913. Every car company copied it. Thousands of parts, hundreds of workers, hours of welding, fitting, bolting. It was slow, expensive, and full of human error. But it was all we knew. Tesla just made it obsolete. The 50,000-ton Gigapress doesn't improve the old way. It erases it. This machine generates pressure that could flatten a mountain. It melts aluminum to 700 degrees Celsius, pours it into a precision mold, and 90 seconds later, an entire car frame emerges. Not 300 welded pieces, one solid piece. No welds means no weak points. No joints means no rattles after years of driving. No assembly line means no compounding human error. Every frame identical, every time. This consistency was impossible before, and it's why legacy automakers are terrified. Let's talk about what this actually does to production, because the difference is staggering traditional method. 10 to 12 hours to build a car body structure. Over 1,000 individual parts that need stamping, cutting, welding, and fitting dozens of workers stationed along the line. Multiple quality control checkpoints, because something always goes wrong somewhere. Giga press method, 90 seconds for the main structure. Fewer than 10 major components for the entire vehicle. Minimal human involvement, perfect consistency, because machines don't have bad days or make mistakes when tired. When Tesla introduced their first Giga press in 2019, 